What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast, back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. We got Brett back on the show. What's up, Brett? Hey, how's it going, man? Good to be back. Yeah, good to have you on. And we got Dustin back as well. Dustin, good to have you on. Yeah, thank you for having me back. Yep, this should be a good episode of the Week 13 Recap. A lot of good football, and we're going to get right into it uh, for me and Brett here with the Lions and Bears. On Sunday, uh, a big, game. yeah, good game, a big game uh, with a lot of implications on the line for both of us, a lot of pride. Uh, Bears jump out to a 23-13 halftime lead. Looks pretty good in the first half. Uh, the offense explodes for 23 first half points for the first time since week three of 2019. Um, so I was feeling pretty good. You know, our offense hasn't looked like that all year. Um, David Montgomery with two rushing touchdowns in the first half. Looked pretty good as well. And then in typical Matt Nagy Bears fashion, he only received six second-half carries. Uh, Brett, is that something you noticed at all in the game, uh, that the Bears kind of went away from David Montgomery? Well, that's something that I think has been happening uh, as of recent there in Chicago. Like, they come out strong and get, you know, the first half, and then... The adjustments that they make sometimes or that the coaches make, it seems like they're making adjustments that are unnecessary. Yeah, adjustments and, that hurt uh, the team. Right, adjustments that were, <laughs> yeah, you know, that needed to be uh, from the other, you know, the other side of the uh, line of scrimmage, but you just helped them out and, you know, you can't give, uh, you know, you can't give any team in the NFL any leverage like that. Um, and it seems just to be, I don't know, it's not just, not just my number, but yeah, it was a trend, you know. Obviously, the, once the Lions started coming back, they were, they were passing a little more. But in the scheme of things, you know, why not? You know, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah, I, I mean, that's just, it's a typical Matt Nagy move, and I didn't like it. I've been, you know, you guys have heard me say feed Montgomery. Ever since we drafted him, and I don't think that we've ever done that enough. So, um, then uh, some good news for you guys. Uh, defensive end Romeo Aquara beats Jermaine Fetty and gets a strip sack on Trubisky in the clutch, setting up an Adrian Peterson go-ahead touchdown late in the fourth. You guys had battled back uh, within, uh, I believe it was three at that point. Then you get the strip sack and are in great position. They had to fire you up seeing Romeo Aquara make such a big play in the clutch. Yeah, it was, um, you know, the point, uh, a big play made by a big foot, you know, a playmaker that, I mean, it can be, you know, made by anybody, obviously, but he's been so highly tired and, you know, just get back full health. We, we got a uh, great thing there with, you know, our, our ed, edge rushers and uh, it paid off there. They, I don't know what the call was, but it seemed like they, they knew what they were doing there at the end of the game as opposed to the last, you know, whatever since the beginning of the season. Yeah, and it was just a great individual effort by Aquara as well. Um, Dustin, what did you think, uh, you know, Trubisky gets beat here, a strip sack, a lot of national media, and a lot of people are saying, you know, the, the headline coming out of here is Trubisky fumbles away the Bears' chances. Is that how you see it? Or do you think that was more of a great job by the Lions to come back and get that win? I mean, the Lions were pretty impressive to come back and get that win, mm -hmm. which, is, which is actually something different. It says a lot about Daryl Bevel because the Lions could not finish under Patricia. Yes, so, good point. I see it as, you know, it was a better Detroit defense, but also, you know, still the same bear struggle. You know, I mean, the offense was moving, but that line just – gave it up and let that strip sack happen and cost him the game. Yeah, and uh, tell me what you thought of this. So even after that score, the Lions go up four. The pressure's all on Trubisky. And I you know, I'm, I tweeted it and stuff. I was like, can Trubisky be clutch here and deliver a game-winning drive? And it seemed as though he was getting to do it. He was moving him down the field. He had him in field goal range towards the end. And on a third and five, uh, Trubisky hits Allen Robinson. But Allen Robinson turns up field and goes out of bounds a yard short on third and five, setting up fourth and one. Uh, inexplicable, inexcusable 
you know, game management, uh, mental awareness going on here. Dustin, did you see that? And what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, again, it's another part of being, you know, disciplined and undisciplined. I just think that, you know, Nagy has to do a better job with the game management. Nagy and the players on the field. I mean, what do you think, Brett? That, you know, Bears fans love A Rob. And Bears fans all year long have been tweeting, pay A-Rob and extend A-Rob. And then you get into a game against a hated division rival with the game on the line, and he does something as boneheaded as that, as going out a yard short. I don't you know, I can't defend him here. What do you think? No, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's uh, something that at this level doesn't, it shouldn't be happening. Well, yeah. It doesn't, you know, at the, he's still who he is and it doesn't define him as a player he made a mistake and um you know that's that that certain aspects of that have to do with coaching but that necessarily i, I don't know well um, if i could have that, that grind if i could go on a little rant here about alan robinson and i'm not gonna be as bad as i was last week uh, i've defended him all year long despite multiple back shoulder throws that hit him in the hands that he drops multiple times that have and a couple have led to interceptions um and drops in the end zone a couple drops in the end zone um i am at the point where i don't want Allen robinson back i know he's our number one receiver i know he's been solid for a few years and been our best guy but no i don't want to extend him anymore i don't he's had a bad year he's had drops He's and he hasn't come through in the clutch. Uh, he that boneheaded play in this game goes along with the the drop in the end zone against Green Bay last week. What do you think, Dustin? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think you're being, being just a little bit rough on Allen Robinson. I mean, he is he is he is the best playmaker on that offense. But you know, well, what does that say about our offense, though? What was that? What does that say about our offense if he's the best player on it? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I mean, your offense is pretty bad. No offense, but... <laughs> it's true. We're no, on... no, give one all to him. Don't tell him that. We're honest on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you know, people drop balls, and I mean, things happen, but he just had himself a bad game, and I think he'll, he'll, he'll come back and definitely make up for that. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be in a different uniform, though, uh, with the way, you know, this season's going. Um, Then on fourth and one, so I mentioned David Montgomery's strong first half, and then only six carries in the second half. You get to fourth and one with 16 seconds left. Seems like, to me, you know, normally I'm all for a run the ball on fourth or third and short. But with 16 seconds left and just one time out, I kind of more in the favor of throwing the ball here. And Matt Nagy, with zero game management skills, decides to run a draw on 4th and 1 of David Montgomery. He gets stopped short, turnover on downs, and that's the game. Brett, did you think the Bears should have been throwing there? You had to be pretty happy with a draw that got stopped for no gain. Well, man, looking at that Lions front sometimes, you know, I'd be thinking I can get that yard too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's like, I don't know, they wanted it more, finally. There was some... They were playing. They wanted to prove that they were a different team. Yeah. After, you know, what happened after the, the firing. So, I think it came out and they just, you know, the Bears don't necessarily, they don't have the same motivation that the Lions do as far as what just happened. And, you know, now they're, the first time we played you guys, you know, we all know that, that we should be 2-0 and against you this year. So, mm-hmm. It's that that's probably something that was in the back of their minds too, and you know they didn't get that one stop, and that's what it was. But it just seems like yeah, there's no I don't know, there's no leadership. Uh, it's falling apart fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's time for a regime change, just like it was in Detroit. And you're right, they did seem to play fired up for Daryl Bevel, got him his first career win, and. Uh, Daryl Bevel now has more wins over the Bears than Matt Patricia did as a Lions head coach. <laughs> I know that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, oh, I see it as like um, as like that just goes to show that the Lions players did not respect 
Patricia. I mean, they played their hearts out for Daryl Bevel on Sunday. Yes. I dare you say the team yeah. the team had quit on Matt Patricia. Um and this leads me, let's, this is a nice uh, transition, because in my opinion, the Bears players have quit on Matt Nagy now two weeks in a row. If you had told me that the Bears would score 30 points in this game on offense, I would say automatic win. But in the past two games, the Bears defense, the heart and soul of the team, the backbone of the team, has allowed 75 points. Um, in, my uh, opi- in my opinion, that points directly to... You know, the defense hasn't done this. I don't think this defense has done this in, in a few years, since we got Khalil Mack at least. 75 points in, back, in two games. I think they've quit on the coaching staff. They don't believe in the coaching staff. They don't believe in the offense to, to carry them. Um, and I think that, you know, the season's over. We're 5-7. and seven. The season's done. I don't expect them to be competitive the rest of the way out. And it's fire Ted Phillips, fire Ryan Pace, fire Matt Nagy, and get a new franchise quarterback in here. It's unreal that we were in this spot in 2017, and we're back here, same spot, in 2020. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, I mean... Fine with me. (laughs) But, I mean, go ahead, Dustin, what were you going to say? Yeah, uh, sorry about that, bro. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... uh, No, you're fine. Yeah, um, I just... See it as, I mean, it's to me, it starts with the front office. I mean, the Bears have struggled with their last three head coaches, so mm-hmm. something's not right with the general manager, or maybe even the owners aren't doing it right. I mean, they are in Chicago, you know, you look at how bad the Bears or the, the Bulls are. Yeah, and now it's true, it goes all the way up to ownership. Uh, ownership's been a problem for a while, and we've been content blaming coaches and GMs and and you know even team presidents but if we're honest with ourselves it goes all the way up to the mccaskies and uh we need change and if if they would be willing to sell the team i as a fan would be 100 percent for it so we'll see uh where that goes but uh congrats to you brett a big a good lions win they end that streak of losses against chicago and now it's you know you guys can kind of have a have a fresh start and some solace to uh, a rough season overall. Yeah, and we're like game out of the playoffs, man. We still got it. That's the thing that yeah. pisses me off more than anything, though, is it's like Minnesota needed overtime to beat the Jags, and the Lions have struggled this year, and that you know the playoffs are still wide open, and the, and the division's still wide open, and not to win the division, but you know what I'm saying, like the wild card, and to have no heart. In a in the in back to back games with the season on the line, you know I gotta wash my hands of this bear whatever's going on in at Hallis Hall. Well, I'm sure we'll find out very very soon. Yeah. So, do you guys think that Daryl Bevel might get hired as the Lions' new head coach? Yeah, what do you think on that, Brett? Well, I mean, if you know, if the um, the morale is the way that it was the other day. Absolutely. Yeah. Those guys, those guys look happy, and you know, you look, at, you know, you feel happy, you play happy, and, and you win games. Um, you know, your quarterback does for four hundred yards. It's in your defense. Yeah, they kind of came out there at the beginning and, and let loose, and but then they may came up with a huge game-winning play there, and and. and this team just seems amped up for something that they weren't before. Yep. I like it. So my personal take, I hope we go, I hope we finish 5-11 and 11 and can trade up and get Zach Wilson or a decent quarterback and get this thing turned around as soon as possible. But shitty way to end the year for the Bears, for a Bears fan. Good win for the Lions. Let's go to your team, Dustin, the Colts who played at Houston against the Texans. The Colts jump out to a 21-10 first-half lead. But the ta- Texans rally to pull within two yards of taking the lead with a minute 30 left in the game. But a low and outside snap by center Nick Martin results in a fumble, and the Colts recover it, and the game's over. The Colts survive 26-20. to But uh, I'm sure you're not the happiest with this win. You could make an argument that the Colts could have 
you know, lost this game pretty easily. What What's your thoughts on it, Dustin? Well, my thoughts personally is, man, I am getting sick and tired of that secondary when they got all them athletes just giving up those big plays and 15 oh. to 20 yard passing plays. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. And it's just like the defense falls asleep at, at times and allows teams to go on big drives. And you can't do that when you play a Deshaun Watson. Yeah, it's true. And that defense, in order for the Colts to make a deep run in the playoffs, the defense is going to be have to be playing at its best. And, I mean, the offense does need to score in the red zone, too. I mean, we have too many fails in trying to score in the red zone, and our field goal kicker can only kick it like 40, so yeah. any other. So we have to start scoring, and we need touchdowns. You, do you want more or need more out of the running game, out of Jonathan Taylor and, and Naheem Himes? Absolutely. I mean, when they run for over 50, 60 yards, we win every ball game. So yeah. Yeah, it can't be all on Phillip Rivers. The defense and running game has to pitch in and make things easier for him at this point in his career. Um Brett, Deshaun Watson visibly upset after the fumble, just sitting on the field in shock. After the game, he said, this shit hurts. I'm tired of losing. Um, the Texans are in a little bit of an adjustment period. Um, they fired Bill O'Brien. They traded away DeAndre Hopkins. Any chance the Texans are hitting the reset and Deshaun Watson might be available? Or, or is Deshaun Watson ready to get out of town already? I mean, not. Uh at the beginning of last year, he thought, you know, this is going to be it for a while. Like, yeah. Set, and everybody thought the same thing. And now it's just, if I were him, I would want to get out. <laughs> uh, you know, depending on what management does, that, well, now, you know, they this does look like they're going to start re rebuilding here a little bit somewhere. And, um, you know, if he can take advantage and... and if he wants to be there, he does, but like you said, the body language <laughs> doesn't match that, so I, I don't know. Uh, Dustin, I want your opinion on this. If I'm the Bears, if I'm GM Ryan Pace, and I know that my seat is hot, and the team's about to miss the playoffs, and I need to make up for trading up to draft Mitch Trubisky and not having a franchise quarterback, you know what I'm doing? You know how I can save my job? Mortgage the future, trade away your upcoming first round picks, and go get Deshaun Watson. Go make up, swallow your pride, and make up for the mistake, and go get the guy you should have drafted. What do you think on that? Absolutely. I mean, that right there would make Bears fans believe again because, I mean, Bears fans are pretty pissed off about how these last, er, their drafts have went these last couple of years, and Deshaun Watson would be huge. You would have an offense. To go with that defense. You wouldn't even need elite receivers because Watson's going to find open receivers with the way he extends play. So. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see it. Uh, Brett, I'm sure you would not be a fan of that. I mean, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, there's always been competition at the quarterback position though in the, in the north there. So yeah. It's, but that's a different kind of... We just, no. This would be the best. He would be the best quarterback we've ever had since Sid, L Sid Luckman. He's better than Jay Cutler. And there hasn't been a quarterback in our division that has the athleticism that he can showcase. Yeah. I mean, uh, the over. He's not the best overall quarterback, but he's the best overall athlete. Yeah. So far. He's got the athleticism to go with the arm. Unlike right. unlike most, maybe you know Russell Wilson category, but you know. Yeah, um, I'm always going to be a Deshaun Watson fan. I'm always going to be wearing his Clemson jersey around. Um, so I'm going to be a fan of his whether he's a bear or not. But nothing would make me happier than to see Ryan Pace swallow his pride and atone for his mistake and somehow try to get that you know him in Chicago. But we'll see. It's a, it's, it's a long shot for sure. And uh, I'm sure if, if the Texans are smart at all, they're not going to let Deshaun Watson leave. But they already let DeAndre Hopkins go for, for what, <laughs> pennies? So. A bag of moldy bread. Yeah. 
Uh, Dustin, your Colts improved to 8-4. and four. They're tied with the Titans for first place, but the Titans own the tiebreaker at this moment. And coming into Week 14, a big game at the Las Vegas Raiders. Where's your Colts confidence meter going into this big game? I mean, the confidence got to be high. I mean, you know, because that was a very lucky win, obviously. Mm -hmm. So the football guys were on our side. But uh, I feel like, you know, Vegas barely beat the Jets if it wasn't for a stupid cover zero yep. call by Greg Williams. Uh, the Jets would have beat Las Vegas. So I feel like it's winnable. Indianapolis can go into Vegas and beat them. Yeah, but I I think it's going to be a good, tough game. I think it's going to go down to the wire. I don't see a scenario in which this isn't a three a, a one-possession game in the final minutes. What, do you agree, Brett? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, something that... Oh, I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily... <laughs> I don't know, being a Lions fan, it's not, uh, you know, it, it, I'm used to things like that. So, um, as far as the situation there, um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's going to be pretty crazy. I, I'm looking forward to it. I think, uh, you know, you're going to see, you know, a hard fought battle. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who comes out of that. I, I expect the Raiders to bounce back. They're better than what they look like on Sunday. And so are the Colts. So I hope both teams bring their A game. Uh, let's go uh, to... It's, um, go ahead. Indianapolis does better with uh, quarterbacks that stay in, in the pocket. All of our losses have came from quarterbacks who can extend plays. And Derek Carr really doesn't move that well outside of the pocket. Yeah. It'll be key if Josh Jacobs is a good, is good to go, and you're gonna have to keep an eye on Darren Waller, Henry Ruggs, that speed. So I, I don't know. I think it'll be a good game. I'm looking forward to watching that one. Let's go to Saints Falcons, where the Saints jump out to a 21-9 third quarter lead and hang on to win 21-16. And the stat of the week, in my opinion, is Saints head coach Sean Payton improving to eight and zero. In the last two seasons without Drew Brees. Brett, is there a better head coach in football at plugging in backup quarterbacks and getting the most out of them? No, I don't think so. We, we talked about that uh, a couple of weeks. Well, I don't know. It was a while. We, I think we brought, definitely talked about that several times about, you know, Bridgewater coming in there and doing what he did after, uh, you know, Brees got hurt last year, which was a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. They, you know, it's amazing. Like, and not, not to take anything away, like, Bridgewater's a great athlete, obviously. So, you know, these quarterbacks aren't just, you know, bummed, but they know what they're doing. So they're, they're, they're keeping athletes. They, they they know how to use them within their system. Um, you know, he's just, he's a genius when it comes to that. Yeah. As far as pick and plug or, or how he has to adjust based off of, what he has behind center so uh, it's fun to watch yep in my opinion Sean Payton is the exact opposite of what Matt Nagy is when he has to adjust to a player's strength to fit his system he excels rather than Matt Nagy who was like this quarterback doesn't fit my system so he sucks no you adjust and get the most out of the players you have and Sean Payton I don't think there's a better coach at doing that now Dustin Taysom Hill a lot of people had questions about him if he could be a starting quarterback in this league if he's more of a tight end or fullback or what is he um, but he throws his first two career touchdown passes against Atlanta improves to three and zero as a starting quarterback uh, what's your thoughts on Taysom Hill he looks to be you know some people are comparing him to Tim Tebow but he looks to be playing pretty well at least so far yeah I mean he's like I said before, you know, he's a playmaker. He's the jack of all trades. He's a guy who can catch the ball, run the ball, throw the ball, shoot, probably return kicks if he was able to. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's just, I'm going to go with what Brett said. He had a great point when he said Sean Payton can, he knows what, you know, to 
which players can be playmakers, and he can bring the best out of anybody. So yeah, that's what he's doing out of Taysom Hill. So Saints are ten and two now, and the number one seed in the NFC. Uh, you know, looking at this right now, I think Sean Payton needs to be in uh, among the favorites to win Coach of the Year award. Do you guys agree? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, he, he deserves to be in the conversation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to the next game: the Bengals at the Dolphins. Bengals get out to a seven nothing lead, but Miami scores nineteen straight and wins nineteen to seven. Brett, how surprised were you? After the success that Fitzpatrick had the last couple weeks, they start rookie quarterback Tua again for this game. Uh, you know, I was a little bit shocked. In my opinion, I would have ran with Fitzpatrick, you know, until he starts losing games. Uh, the longer I can sit Tua, the better, in my opinion. But they keep plugging him back in there, and so far it's it's working out as Tua improves to 4-1 and one as a starter. Yeah, I mean, it's we've talked about this topic I think a couple times as well is every, I think the whole world the entire globe was upset <laughs> when they benched Fitzpatrick and you know it wasn't and that's a different kind because you know usually you know, 999 times out of a thousand the quarterbacks getting benched it's not for that reason it's not for that Yeah. so it's it's just uh, it's a situation that, you know, we don't have control of. Obviously, they thought it was the right move. Some people agreed. Some people didn't. And uh, they all the fact that they all – see, the, the thing is that they had to be – that shows his character and leadership, you know, because you could tell he was upset. Mm -hmm. uh, but without him being who, you know, continuing on to be that mentor that, that – they wouldn't be, or you know, he wouldn't have a four-one record as a starter. So yeah, uh, that's just kudos to the, how, how uh, well or how how much of a teammate or, or of a person or the organization organization is there. You know, want to be there to help uh, thrive and be do the best that they can. You know, to pass on everything that they know. Absolutely, um, Dustin. The Dolphins. I mean, they. With Tua or Fitzpatrick, they keep winning. They improved to 8-4, and four, just a game behind. I mean, everyone's talking about the Buffalo Bills and how good of a season they're having. Dolphins just a game back. Um, who wins the AFC East? And, I mean, the Dolphins right now looking like a playoff team. How far do you think they can go? Yeah, I mean, I think they'll be out in the first round. But, I mean, it, it, it's a huge step for the franchise. I mean, yeah. you know, Nobody expected Miami to even get seven wins this season. I mean, I don't think. And, you know, it's kudos to Coach Flores for really turning that, you know, organization around. And I feel like the future in Miami is very bright. And speaking of Coach of the Year, Coach Flores should definitely be in the running for that. Absolutely. I agree. And the way they're playing defense is amazing. And that's, his, that's what his specialty is. Um, Xavier and Howard, their star corner, with eight interceptions on the season, leads the NFL. So, uh, good shit out of the Dolphins' defense. And the Dolphins are so good at defense, I feel like part of Tua's success and Fitzpatrick's success is you could throw anyone back there at quarterback, and they would they would have a chance to win with that defense. Yeah. Xavier and Howard have to stop beating people up. He's awesome. He's one of my favorites, for sure. Um... <laughs> Let's go to Jags Vikings. As the Jags jump out to a 16 to 6 lead after Kirk Cousins throws a pick six to linebacker Joe Schobert, the Vikings rally, take a 24 16 lead late. Jags are able to drive down, score a touchdown and a two to force overtime, 24 24. A couple missed field goals. Vikings need overtime to beat the one and ten Jags. They win 27 24, get back to 500. Six and six and second place in the NFC North. Brett, any chance the Vikings can go on a run and make the playoffs? I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, you were just talking about how the Bears just seem to go uh, the other direction, and it seems the Vikings team might be in a different mental state as far as what they want to do. Mm -hmm. 
there's several teams right there in that mix to get those last couple spots. So um, they're gonna have to, you know, they just gotta show. They just gonna want it more, and uh, they're. They, I'm surprised because the defense, man, it's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so that's just it's like man the Bears and the Lions like that that defense is gonna possibly make the playoffs ahead of us and then they beat us yeah like man it's just it's <laughs> the MC North aside from who, who that we don't speak of uh, doing all right right. Not doing so well, I should say, actually. Well, it's our own fault. You can't beat the Vikings, who, like, we're sitting here ragging on the Vikings. If we can't beat them head up, head, straight up, head to head, then we shouldn't, you know, we have no room to talk. And, you know, no, I'm not talking about, well, that's what I'm saying. We're all, we're all doing terrible. Yeah, besides, exactly. Uh, the other, you know. That's what I'm saying. And so Vikings, I mean, it doesn't matter if you win ugly. They are able to get the win and, and give themselves an opportunity. So we'll see how they finish. Um, yeah, what do you think, uh, Dustin, the Vikings? I mean, they needed overtime to beat Mike Glennon and the Jags. But do they have higher potential than that? I mean, yeah. We've seen it with the win streak that they've been on. and I mean, you know, they started off terrible from what, you know, what we thought could have been a three, four win season. They're now six and six. Yeah. At five hundred, and the defense picking it up a little bit. Kirk Cousins is getting a little bit better, and I mean, you know, teams have those games where a two and ten team or a one and ten team will come in and play you tough. I mean, yeah. Jacksonville, Jacksonville played like they have nothing to lose, and that's and that's the truth. Yep, it's a good point, and you like to see a franchise with resiliency. A uh, good head coach like Mike Zimmer. You know, you got Kirk Cousins out there throwing a pick six, but he's able to respond and rally and keep the team in it and make it play at the end of the game. So, good takes there. Let's go to Raiders-Jets, where the Raiders, they get out to a 24-13 lead, but then give up their lead. The Jets take a 28-24 lead. And then with 13 seconds left, defensive coordinator Greg Williams elects to bring the house to get to Derek Carr, who steps up in the pocket and throws a 46-yard game-winning touchdown to Henry Ruggs, uh, Vegas barely avoids disaster against the Jets. A lot of people criticizing Greg Williams for this, uh, for for the decision to bring the engage eight there at the end of the game with just seconds left on the clock. My question is this: uh, Do you guys think possibly that was like a management or ownership decision? Like I know Greg Williams. You know, he's an aggressive and he's an easy guy to blame, right? But there's no secret the Jets are trying to go winless. They're trying to go 0-16. You think, you think there was a chance there that they said, hey, we're trying to lose. Let's, get, let's, let's try to lose this game. Let's do some stupid shit and see if the Raiders can capitalize. What do you think, Brett? Uh, I know you saw Twitter. Yeah. Oh, they were going off. Yeah. Like, oh, they... It was a, you know, there was a, a, a solid argument about how they had used it. They had done a couple actual, uh, pretty much all out blitzes earlier in the game. Mm-hmm. And it sets and it worked, but that scenario. The seconds left. Me, I mean, you, you and me. What you saw before, you don't, you don't do, you know, I, I just don't think you do that unless. I mean, I don't know. Unless you're trying to lose. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna. It's hard to say otherwise. You and me playing Madden, and that scenario comes up, and I'm playing. I'm, not, I'm playing prevent defense there. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I'm playing some. I'm not all out blitzing. I yeah, think. no engage eight there. <laughs> like, what do you think? Are we sending people? What are you gonna do? Just sit back there with Henry yeah, Ruggs, like the fastest like, guy in the league. Like, all right, safety split in two. Yeah. What do you, what do you think, uh, Dustin? Is this Greg Williams being a dumbass? Or is this the Jets trying to lose out? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I do think it's the Jets trying to tank. I mean, because if they win that game, they're tied with Jacksonville. For yeah. The, for the worst record. And, you know, obviously everybody's trying to go after Trevor. But... 
then again, you know, I, I'm kind of upset about the firing of, of uh, Greg Williams because Adam Gase, at, you know, acts like he's better or, you know, he, he's any better and he's not. Yeah, cra- crazy eyes is no better than that guy. I agree. It's the fact that, like, you know, in that type of game situation, the head coach has something to say about what play to run. Exactly. So, that's why I think it was on purpose. And uh, so hear me out with this take. The NFL, no NFL franchise, you know, the league won't let them. No team is going to go out there and say we're trying to lose games. No one. You can't say it. It'll get criticized majorly throughout you know, all media. So you have to say that you're trying to win every game while – Play calling and doing dumb shit so that you guarantee you're going to lose it. So that's why I think I think there's something to be said for that was on purpose. That was like, wow, we're in a position to win this game. Let's make sure we don't. What do you think? You guys think there's a something to that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying no. Because <laughs> I mean, they're not. Dustin, you agree? They're not going to come out and say we're trying to lose or. Yeah, we called that so the Raiders could get an easy touchdown here. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, like you said, isn't there a rule against trying to throw football games to try to get the best oh, they, or something? Oh, yeah, they they get them. And plus, you got to remember, like, dope, dude, nobody wants to go 0-16. Yeah. Like, players don't want to do that. So, like, at some point, you know, if they're going to be like, oh, let's, you got to think that too, but... I mean, I don't know. These guys are also, a lot of them are fighting for, you know, their jobs. So, out on the field, too. So, I don't know, but. I agree with that. You're Like, these players are never going to buy in. If your coach stands up and says, hey, we're trying to lose this game. Give up an easy touchdown here. Players are going to be like, fuck no, I'm trying to intercept that. I, I'm playing for my job, my security, not the, not the team to get a, a number one overall pick. Um, right. So but you got to play. You know, you it's, that's to give that up and to just nobody wants to go winless in a season like that's yeah. It doesn't matter. Coach, the, the organization might, but the players on the field do not. Yeah, and the and the thing with Greg Williams is he's a veteran in the game. Greg Williams can get fired by everybody, and he'll still get an opportunity the next year at some at, in some respect. You know, as long as Greg. Is, go ahead. Sorry about that. You're good. The thing about it is, it, it, it kills me that, that, you know, the Jets wanted to throw that game and Adam Gates won't even be there for the future. So, yeah, you know, I mean, he's gone this season. But my question is, why do you think he fired Williams if that was an organization call? Because they have to. If you, it's like optics. Optics and, and politics in the NFL are, are very real. So if you're going to have a play call like that, that us three are going to see and, and be like, what the hell? Like, not just us, but like the entire fan base, the entire country is going to see that and be like, you know, horrible play call. What the hell were you thinking? There's got to be a fall guy, right? So the Jets know, I'm sure Greg Williams knew, the end of this year, if we go 1-15 and or 0-16, and whatever it is, I'm getting fired. What does it matter? So... I'm going to do what's best for the organization and make a dumb decision here. Allow us to lose the game. I'll be the fall guy. I'll take it. I'll get fired. And I'll get a job next offseason and be back in the NFL somewhere else. Yeah, but we still don't know if Tua is going to choose to go to the Jets. I mean, with Trevor? Well,. The Jets want that opportunity. Even if Trevor doesn't want to go to the Jets, chances are they can move him for an outstanding haul and get multiple picks in this year's draft, in next year's draft, and be and set their organization up. But they're trying to go 0 and 16 the same way the Jags are trying to go 1 and 15. So I strongly believe that I think that was on purpose. They tried to lose that game. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, but we'll never know for sure. The Jets are no, never going to come out and say it. Uh, maybe if we get Greg Williams on the podcast, we'll ask him someday. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go. 
Let's go Browns Titans, a battle of eight and three teams. Uh, one of the games I was looking forward to most, and a shocker, as the Browns go up thirty-eight to seven by halftime. Um, now some people I was talking to are like, you know, Browns are gonna win this game by thirty. And I was like, no, pump the brakes. The Browns are going to allow them back into the game, and we'll see if they hang on to win. Well, they did allow them back in. They hung on to win 41-35. But, uh, I mean, so it's a big win. But they, you know, the Browns are the Browns. They need to finish games, and I'm still not I'm still not there yet. D uh, Brett, where are you on the Browns? I know this is a big win, but are you completely sold on them yet, or do you need to see more? I mean, I think we've been questioned, well, not us necessarily, but uh, fans in the nation has been questioning the Browns, and they've, I, I think they've done their fair fair to, to, to say, you know, that they at least get the respect to, as to be the, you know, people don't respect their, their record. Mm hmm And that's a thing, and I get it, but there's certain, that's you know, you're going to have that in, Every sport on all levels, somewhere, and you just you understand it. But the, these teams, you don't have to respect it. They don't care. So yeah, keep uh, stacking wins. Who cares what the public thinks? It does. Yeah, it doesn't. You know, if, if you're not in the mindset of them, they don't. They don't care. So um, just keep going and doing what you're doing. People want to bash for whatever, uh, just prove them wrong, and they, they've done it, you know, like, it, Mayfield hasn't necessarily lived up to par, I, I guess, you know, in, in certain, well, several games this year, but, again, they're, they're finding ways to win, but they have some talent in the skill position that other organizations don't have the privilege to have, you know, they got an abundance in places, so, yeah. they should be winning games, uh, they you know, who knows what they could be if nothing the bigger's of, of, you know, he, he could improve. Well, what do you think, Dustin? I mean, uh, the Browns get to 9-3. and three. They beat the Titans. Everyone was saying the Browns struggle against teams with winning records and, and actual playoff teams. Let's not forget this Titans team was in the AFC Championship game last year. So they get the big win. Uh, they hang on, you know, big 38-7 to lead. They hang on to get the win. What do you think this says about the Browns? Is this the win they needed, or do they still need more? Do they need to beat the Ravens, you know, on Monday night coming up? Do they need to prove they can beat the Steelers, or is it just good enough to get to ten wins, get into the playoffs, and see what happens? What do you think? I think for people to actually respect them, they need to get a big division win because they've been owned in the division, you know, by the Ravens and the Steelers. So, I mean, if you get that, at, at least one of those big division wins, and you'll get into the playoffs. And, I mean, Cleveland fans have to be pretty happy right now. Yeah. They went from trash to, you know, I mean, if Pittsburgh wasn't having one hell of a year, they'd be in, you know, first place right now. So. Yep. The Browns are a little bit, you're trying to figure them out, right? Like, they, they're 9-3. and three. So that when's the last time they've been nine and three? So Browns fans are ecstatic. Um, I, in my prediction, I think they're going to go ten and six and make the playoffs. That right there will have Browns fans ecstatic. But if you're looking at it from a non-biased, non-fan point of view, you see uh, losses to the Ravens and Steelers, like you mentioned. Not just you know losses, but blown you know beat the brakes off them, thirty-eight six and thirty-eight seven. So, big ass game coming up on Monday night, Browns Ravens. I know the Browns are most likely going to the playoffs, but in order for them to gain the respect of the country and of the nation and the league, they need to prove they can beat the Ravens and the Steelers. Otherwise, if they don't, I mean, this is a this is a playoff team, sure, but it's a one and done playoff team. What do you? Is it? Yes. They don't if they. It, well, if, as of right now, if they don't play anybody but the Ravens or the Steelers, you know, they're going to win. So, but... But, um, but it starts they, in the division. Yeah. It starts but, in the division. If you can't win your division, 
you know, if you can't beat, like, let's say, you know, if you can't beat the biggest rivals in your division, that's going to come back to haunt you, especially if both are in the playoffs. It, it, it will, and it, but that, you know, that's more so if you can't, if you go 10-6 and six and you lose to two of your rivals, and those, are, you know, four losses are to other teams, like, they're beating everybody else. So that's a, it's a little bit, you know, it's still there. I see what you're, I know what you're saying. And they, they're not, you know, you want to be, if you're going to be um, at that next level, then obviously you want to be dominant in all aspects. And yeah, you're right. It does start in the division, but I mean, we're out getting it done and nobody else is doing that. So it's a good step in the right direction for sure. Just making the playoffs is big for Cleveland. Right, and if they can figure out, you know, we can see now, all right, a couple of weeks ago, they got, I don't know, they got trashed for whatever after they won a game. That was crazy. And then, um, you know, how it's do or die time here, so this is going to have implications for seeding. Mm-hmm. Not that home field has it. Well, certain, you know, see, because up here in Michigan, nobody can go to the game, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Certain other states, though, it it, it will be a factor. Uh, I don't know though how that. I don't know what it, where at, but anyway, well, you know, you still want to win. Well, this year to win. even if you know, you, you know, you, it's unlikely you're gonna catch catch Pittsburgh Pittsburgh at this point. But um, you know, to get ahead in the AFC and to, to show that you know, Baltimore to back down a little bit and show the nation too. That's going to be, you know, that's a big statement. Well, they've got an opportunity. It's going to be a home game on Monday Night Football next week. And, you know, against the Ravens, it's a prove-it game. And the Ravens are also back backs against the wall. They need to make the playoffs. They're coming off a rough stretch. In my opinion, uh, I got the Ravens big. I got the Ravens by double digits. Wow. Uh, so... You know, I'm a hater, sure, but the Browns got to prove it to me. They got to prove they can beat the Ravens. On paper, I'm taking the Ravens by double digits. Uh, so we'll see. After Lamar last weekend, boy, you better watch out. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's it's going to be good. I mean, regardless, half the battle for Cleveland is is uh, you know getting everybody to watch them on national TV. When's the last time they've had a home Monday Night Football game? So. It's, yeah, nobody's gonna be there. Yeah, well, I'm on on TV and shit, but it's a it's a step in the right no, direction. No, I, uh, and I credit to Kevin Stefanski, he's done a pretty good job as a rookie head coach. Um, the dog pound would be crazy if they if they were allowed to have fans. It would be. Man. There would be. Why not? Their masks. It's safe. They can all wear masks. Yeah. It's crazy. Could you imagine a stadium full of that? Now. Dustin, real quick, the Titans, they fall to 8-4, and four, a tough loss, a game that many people predict them to win. They lose, they get blown out in the first half. What do you think about the Titans? Are they vulnerable? Are you feeling more more confident about getting past the Titans for the division? Oh, yeah, I mean, the Titans are vulnerable, and I mean, they still have a couple tough games left. I mean, you know, they have to play Green Bay yet, and still, you know, and Houston, who is getting better so I feel like the division right now is up for grabs between Indianapolis and Tennessee yeah now here's my take on that and you you might not like this Dustin I feel like despite this being a bad loss I think and and getting down 38 to 7 I think this shows strengths of the Titans And that the Titans are going to be an issue deep into the playoffs. And I'll tell you why. I think that the the Titans struggled. The Titans had one of those games where nothing would go right. They couldn't protect the ball. Interceptions, fumbles, turnovers on downs. Very poor defense. Guys running wide open downfield. Baker Mayfield had a field day on them. And on top of that, Derrick Henry was held to just 60 yards rushing. So... A lot of bad, and yet the Titans still managed to put up 35 points. In that second half, Ryan Tannehill with his arm and those weapons with A.J. Brown and and Corey Davis and those guys showed 
ability to get down big and be able to throw themselves back into a game. And I don't think we've seen that. A lot of people didn't think the Titans had that. They look at the Titans, and it's Derrick Henry. And it's Ryan Tannehill running the ball. They don't see the Titans as an explosive throw-the-ball offense. And I think they have a little bit of that. Um, what do you think? Do you, do you think the Titans are scary that way, or is that just garbage time? I think it's just garbage time. I mean, I have no fear of Tennessee at all. Wow. You, I, mean, I mean, come on, man. I'm not going to play the team that is in this, my division. I'm sorry. You know, you're a Bears fan. You know, you, you're not going to say, oh, Green Bay. You know, I mean, come on. Well, I respect Whoa. Aaron Rodgers. You, so, I mean, they you guys split with them. You guys split with Did them. Did you just play them and get crushed or something? They didn't get crushed. It was a good game. Well, no. I mean, it's hard to say. So Colts were mad after that game. Something did not go right. I think the Titans are still scary, Dustin. I know you don't have as much respect for them. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But they're scary. And Derrick Henry, yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry is a monster. And Nobody can stop him, obviously. I'll, I'll give you that was garbage time. So maybe the Browns are playing that prevent defense and allowing – you know, cheap yards and the Titans to get back into it. But, yeah, but that's a real close. Yeah, it ended up somewhat close. And so we'll see. Right. I oh. hope, here's what I hope. I hope both teams make the playoffs and we see a Colts-Titans playoff game. I want three matchups. Exactly. Let's go, Indy. <laughs> All right, I like it. Um, let's go Rams-Cardinals, another good game. With battle for second place, if not first place, I mean, the Cardinals struggle on a little bit of late. And the Rams jump out, 38-21 lead. Troy Hill picks six off of Kyler Murray, and the Rams win 38-28. Um, L.A. now tied with Seattle for the NFC West lead. The Rams own the tiebreaker. Uh, are we feeling better about the Rams right now? I mean, they were in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and now they're 8-4. and four. What do you think, Brett? Um, well, obviously compared to, you know, comparing and trusting last season, it's down here. You don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. It seems like but they're still going to get a chance. You know, everybody's here, here on the playoffs. So it's, it's how you go into it. And, um, you want to gain momentum. You want to have that, uh, again, the advantage thing. You know, the seating, I don't know how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still you still want to have it doesn't matter how it's going to work you still want to have the, whatever advantage it's going to give you being the highest seed <clears throat> even if it's at home with 100 fans but um, so what do you what, what's your take on Jared Goff at, the, at this moment I feel like the Rams are getting away with playing better defense than they have the yeah. last the last couple of years, and in my opinion, Jared Goff is either hot or cold. He's either going to play well enough for you to win, or he's going to absolutely suck. Uh, that's, you know, kind of, and, and lead to losses that they shouldn't lose, um, like the Dolphins and stuff like that. Do you, you know, where, where's your thoughts on Jared Goff at this moment? He's deaf. something's, you know, I don't know. It seems like something's different. Something changed. Yeah. Uh, but like you said, he's kind of. He's not, and he's not just like, damn, it's a hit or oh, it's a miss. Like it's like, oh, it's a hit. Like or damn, it's a, you know, he's he's just right. Like you said, he's right there. They're doing. The thing is though, like maybe, that's something that it was actually. Uh, implemented that we don't even know about that he just just changed the offense and something happened and if they wouldn't know if it could have been disastrous and maybe we're, we're looking at it differently but at the same time it's I don't know yeah we shouldn't compare the previous year you know so much but at the same time it's it seems like he's regressed yeah, that's what I would say, is that he seems to have regressed with recent years. I mean, he didn't play very well in the Super Bowl when they when they only put up three points. And 
And speaking of which, here comes that that Belichick defense coming into town tomorrow night. So we're going to get a good look at just how good this Rams team is tomorrow night. What are you going to say, Dustin? That's terrible. I mean, yeah, it's a uh, Seahawks better watch out because from what started off with MVP talks from Russell, could now be talking about them getting a wild card and, you know, stuff and barely even winning their division. Yeah, yeah, and the Rams are threatening with that. Now, what's your guys' talk on the Cardinals who had high expectations when they landed DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray? Was quote on it was in conversation for MVP. He had MVP odds coming into this season. Now the Cardinals yeah. are sitting at six and six, <laughs> and possibly might be missing the playoffs entirely. I've been ragging on Cliff Kingsbury all since he got hired, and I'm not a big fan of Kyler Murray either. And in my no. opinion, you add DeAndre Hopkins, and expectations skyrocket. What are, what's wrong with the Cardinals right now? What, what, since when have you not been a fan of Murray? I've never been a fan of Murray. I mean, you, okay, but you just, you, you should have said the Cardinals, you pretty much said they're not, they suck. I, you, you don't have confidence in them, do you? Absolutely not. No. I. Well, not now, at the beginning of the season, maybe, but yeah, I, I mean, I would agree with you, especially with the way that their division's playing. This is seems to be a trend along the whole league of you know, teams that are doomed by their division opponents. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting. And I less than, I mean, I Kyler Murray has undeniable talent and potential. He's got an arm right. and he's got unreal athleticism. The issue is head coach play caller Cliff Kingsbury. And, and if I have an issue with the head coach, a guy that's seen Matt Nagy for years now, and a guy that's seen, you know, horrible coaching, you know, and play callers. Uh, I'm just not a Cliff Kingsbury guy at all, and I think the Cardinals could do a lot better at the head coaching position. What do you think, Dustin? What do you think is holding the Cardinals back? Um, I mean, I don't know, man. The Cardinals are Cardinals, but, yeah, I'm, I used to be high on Kingsbury, but I'm starting to think maybe he's just not doing a good job. He's a better college coach, you know? He's just not a... You can't have a less than 500 college record and come into the NFL and expect it to be easy. And... I don't know, but I don't think knew that. <laughs> I mean, the Cardinals... The Cardinals are going to Cardinal, you know? They're the ones that hired him. They got to deal with it. Um, I'm just it's not... Yeah, the trend is to hire shit coaches and suck. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you, you can tell I'm not not hip on the trends of what's going on in the NFL. You're not happy with coaches right now at all. Fuck. No, there's a lot of bad yeah, ones out there. Well, I think you, the, were like, you were good for until like weeks. <laughs> and then I turned into a bitter old man. <laughs> you sat on and you like started scratching your head. You were looking at the sky, staring. You didn't know what was going on. You're like, wait a second. <laughs> then, you know, I want this. I don't want this. I mean, let me let me go ahead and put it in perspective for you. I would feel more confident with Jim Harbaugh as my head coach than I would Cliff Kingsbury. Well, yeah, but, but that's the thing, man. He's an NFL. He doesn't need to be developing players. He needs to take the ones that are developed. Absolutely. Um, and get the most out of them, yes. He knows that this guy is the most monstrous like, athlete he's ever seen in his life. And if he plugs this gap in this formation and does this and he plays this position, you know, whatever, like, he knows that. I'm just saying, you give Jim Harbaugh a quarterback, and he's going to, a, a okay. good quarterback, and he's going to get a lot out of him. I would trust Jim Harbaugh as head coach of the Cardinals. <laughs> To get more out of this offense than Cliff Kingsbury has. Yeah, yeah so he'll, I agree. He'll do that, and he'll if you give him a decent defense, like I said, he'll, he'll play to their strengths. Right. Yeah, and he's not going to go for two every time, or go for it on fourth down every time. <laughs> 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 no, 
let's not get me started by the coach that goes for it on fourth down all the time. Yeah, your boy over there with Reich. Right. You, you say you don't like the analytics. I like it. I've seen it more in college football. I yeah. I mean, it, it can work in college football, but you see dumbass decisions by, like, Mike McCarthy and these guys in the NFL that has you scratching your head, you know? Hey, well, Duval State went for it a couple of times against like Central Michigan the other day. Yeah. Um, I ended up, you know, we you know, we dominated this weekend. We got Western for the Mac West Championship, chirp, chirp, what up? But, dude, the, the thing is that we, when we went for it, we got it, we scored both times. Yeah. You know, 40. Well, you got to get it. You can't be going and, for it if you're not going to convert. Right, and, it, and, it, and so, you know, it... As far as like the analytics thing, like Dustin, you just it's it, a lot of averages. If you there's a reason you don't like it, you're gonna you're gonna start seeing reasons. You have to start seeing reasons why you you like it because it has to happen for your team at some point. Uh, I don't believe in the law of averages. I believe in in like I don't understand that. I I want the higher percentage play, and I want see this is my thing with with play with offensive play calling. It should be the same as uh, m- medical. The first rule of m- medical, of treating someone, and the first rule of, of play calling for an offense is do no harm. And if I score and I got momentum, I'm going to kick the extra point because I do no harm and I keep the momentum. If I've got it on fourth down and short in my own f- 30, 40 yard line, I'm going to punt it because I'm not going to put my defense in a horrible situation. And yeah, it's, it's, gonna, it's about balance. At that, at that moment, though, you got to think, all right, you get four downs, right? At that point, you've gone nine yards and whatever, nine and a half yards and three downs. So it's over the average of what you're supposed to be at 12. Don't you, you don't have confidence that it, you can just, you get those four downs. You, I have. Like, I understand, it, like, if you get stopped. If I have. Time, if I have confidence that I can get those yards, I want to get those yards in the first three downs. Uh, when it comes down to one play, one opportunity to make one play, a lot can go wrong. You see a lot of fourth down plays or two-point conversions where the ball gets batted down at the line. And what are you going to do about that? That's a throwaway down. And when it's first, second, or third, or at least first and second, you're like, well, on to the next play. Who cares? When it's fourth down... It's a turnover on downs, or when you go for two, it's points off the board. So it's about risk reward, and and a lot of people are a lot more focused on the reward, and don't think about the risk until it comes back and bites them in the ass. In my opinion, so well, it doesn't it doesn't usually play out to where it seems like when it does, you know, the risk the risk that see like one you know that that happened this last weekend it paid off because it ended up being a blowout, but it doesn't happen like that a lot. You know, it's usually averages. That's what I'm saying. The law averages. It's it's one way or the other. So, um, but that's what makes it fun too. You know, the defense. You, you know, if you say you play, say you run the same exact run play, on first down, second down, third down, and you said, okay, we get three yards every time we run this play. Mm-hmm. Play at the same time. Three times in a row, the defense knows that, and you know that you just that you you know that you get the three yards. You're not gonna. I mean, they were on the other side of the, you know they're not doing it on their like twelve yard line, nothing like that. But yeah, I see crazy like from anywhere like that. But well, I'm not so, opposed to going for it on certain in certain positions and in certain. You know, I'll do it when I'm. You know playing Madden or when I or when the, I'm watching the Bears I'll want them to go for it on a fourth and short at some situations but I'm not for doing it all the time for no reason I'm not just like the law averages say do it so do it I you wow. know you have to think about both sides so it's you know it's a complicated we could do an episode on on you know a full episode on it but is you know I just feel like it's done too often and too recklessly at this by point, who? by a lot of NFL head coaches, and oh. and so they got to figure it out and uh, you know have it not hurt your team. So we'll see how it goes down the end. I mean, classic example is Mike McCarthy, who struggled with it all year long and dumb decision after dumb decision, 
and and Cliff Kingsbury as well, where it's it's either taking points off the board or taking momentum away from your team, and it's hurt them in the long run, in my opinion. And and you've seen some from Doug Peterson, you've seen some from Frank Reich as well, and those are compiled dumb decisions. Like those are two, the two separate things that you had to think about, and you chose both. At the same time, I am back this far on my own side of fifty. It's one thing. What am I gonna do with it? Oh, I'm gonna go. Yeah. It's another. Like, yeah, you gotta think it. about risk reward. You gotta think about what happens if I know you believe. Oh, it's one yard. I can get it. I mean, I I trust my guys. They're, they can get one yard. But what happens when a defensive player knows it's coming, beats the offensive lineman off the snap, gets into the backfield and blows it up, and now you've given it to the other team with, you know, momentum and and no points to show for it, you know, just because well, you wanted to be aggressive in that moment. So. Well, yeah, you got to know the situation. Though. you got to feel your guys. Like, you, you know, if you got a team that's amped up that you – is fired up that wants to win and wants to stop you on fourth and one because they hate you and win the game, then that's what happens. And that's what the Lions did. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a, that's an example of that. That's, um, I think that was this week. So, I mean, that's just, that's what happened. And it's the knit, the knit and grit there. So, yeah, but, uh, let's go to see how, let's go to Seahawks. Giants was a damn good game as well. Uh, Seahawks, Jump out to a 5 nothing halftime lead. The Giants rally to take a 17-5 fourth quarter lead. And the Giants defense holds strong and beats Seattle 17-12. A big win for the Giants, who are 5-7 and seven now and tied with Washington for the NFC East lead. This is the biggest thing that I've been thinking about. is When we, when we did our NFC wow. East season prediction, the Washington and the Giants were in the basement. And all we were talking about is Eagles and Cowboys. Dustin, why is it now that the Giants and Washington have risen to the top while the Cowboys and Eagles are struggling? Well, the Cowboys just straight up suck. <laughs> uh, the Eagles, man, Carson Wentz, dude, he just, I don't know what happened to him. I, I, I really don't. And, you know, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. I mean, I, I think he just... In my opinion, it was the drafting of Jalen Hurts that brought his confidence down. But so, anyways, do you think uh, that the only reason that the that the Giants in Washington are up there is because the Eagles and Cowboys have done so poorly? Like, if if the Eagles and Cowboys played to their potential, they should absolutely be leading the division. Most definitely, if Dak wasn't hurt right now, nobody. Nobody but the Cowboys would be leading that division. Mm-hmm. Let's not go all that far. But but Man. what does what does the Giants? How are the Giants going into Seattle and beating that team? I mean, their defense, defensive coordinator Patrick Graham is getting a lot out of that defense, and they're doing just enough with Daniel Jones and that offense, even minus Saquon Barkley. I mean, pretty impressive. Maybe we got to start thinking about Joe Judge as a legit head coach. Absolutely, well, he has them boys believing. Yeah, and that's the thing about it is they're feeding into to what he is trying to run there and turn that place around. I think the Giants in the future are going to be a force in the NFC. Yeah, maybe they're building something. What do you think, Brett? Yeah, they're on the um, opposite side of the spectrum, I think, than as the Eagles, you know, are right now, and it seems like, you know, again. I said it a couple divisions ago. Um, it's striking and it's separating. The demeanor is just different, and you can see it in certain teams. It's teams like the records. Belief, belief in your team is a strong weapon, and if you can c- keep your roster believing, amazing things can happen. They have to, you have to be connected, and like the team morale. If if it's you know you've been a part of something that's you know, being a part of a team, you know, playing basketball, there's certain times when I, you know, growing up or games that I've played in where or times in the season where it's just like, it's just the vibes and the energy, it's just different. And they, you know, some teams don't get there who are six and six, and some teams are six and six. And these teams, if they're playing it the rest of the season, they don't want to play them because 
Yeah. It, like they're about to, you know, roll through everybody. And I think where that comes from a lot of times is uh, veteran leadership, or at least good leadership, positive leadership, positive vibes from not only the coaches but the veteran players on the roster that that pick everybody else up and lead by example. You know, they're five and five and seven, but they're coming in early and working out and hitting the gym and, and studying and and lifting up the everyone else around them. That's the kind of stuff that separates uh, you know, teams with bad records that still believe and teams that have given up already. And and yeah, what do you? I mean, you look at like the five and seven Giants, and they believe, and everything's going right. And you look at the five and seven Bears, and and no one believes, and every and it's the, the ceiling's falling. What do you think, Dustin? Yeah, I mean, you know, well, the Giants, theirs was, you know, they started off one and seven, and you know, just when you thought their locker room was lost, they end up going on a losing streak, and I mean. They've won two without Daniel Jones. Maybe that's saying something. Yeah, with Colt know. McCoy. Yep. And I mean, but also, Brett, I like the way you were trying to be Stephen A. Smith right there about the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what was I going to say here? So, four straight wins for the Giants. Um, I mean, pretty impressive. Who do you, who do you guys ride yeah, with? Five. Who's coming out of the Who's coming out of the East? Who's gonna win that? Is it gonna be the Giants or Washington? Oh man, um, I'm going New York. Wow. They play each other. Wait, have they played each other twice already? I believe yes, and Washington and the Giants won both. Oh well, let's see here. They got about a whole solid four weeks left. Man, see the thing is, I I need to. See who, what's the, what's the remaining schedule? See, the Giants have the easier path. How do, who do they play? So, Giants have home against the Cardinals. Uh, let me see here. Let me make sure. Yeah, Giants, home against the Cardinals, home against the Browns, at the Ravens, home against the Cowboys. Oh, never mind. I must have read that wrong. But what's I, week two? Huh? What's week two? They uh home against the Cardinals, home against the Browns, at Ravens, home against the Cowboys. See, so, they can win all those games. The Giants? They, Man, they could lose all those games those teams, too. Are any of those teams consistent? What have we said about all those teams? We've been talking about the Browns their consistency, Lamar Jackson not you know, being what, what he was last year, but that's again us comparing that that amazing season. You know uh, to who, that point. Can you just you just talk shit about Kyler Murray for like ten minutes. Yeah, but okay. So let's say it's Cardinals Giants. Or, yeah, Cardinals Giants in New York. I give the Cardinals a decent chance to win that. I can. Yeah, I give them a decent chance to win too. But I give the Giants a decent chance to win. If you're All telling right. me if see, they won at Seattle yeah. with Colt McCoy. That's a fluke win right there. If you play the Cardinals with Colt McCoy. I mean, I'm probably picking the Giants, but okay. Let's say Cleveland. Let's say Cleveland. I'm taking Cleveland against the Giants. But a hundred dollar parlay that Cole McCoy leads the Giants and wins out, you probably could retire. Yeah, but I'm not taking that at Baltimore. Hell no. You never see it, bro. That's the thing. Yeah, that's, that Baltimore is not like a. There's sc- they might show up or not. Yeah, they they can be scary. Um, Washington had the more impressive win, to be honest, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. Washington, I would I would favor Washington. Let's look at their schedule. At 49ers is winnable. Versus Seattle is tough. Versus Carolina, winnable. At Philly, winnable. So we'll see. I mean. I think it's too hard to tell right now. We're going to have to wait till week 16 or 17 to make these predictions because right now, it's so up in the gra- up in the air right now. Yeah, it's a solid 2-2. Two two two. Go ahead. I said kudos to my boy Alex Smith. I'm so proud. Yeah, he's balling. So, 
Um, so Seahawks fall 8-4, and four, a bad loss for Seattle. I expect them to rebound, but you can't be losing games to the Giants at home and and be contenders like I was talking about you know, in the preseason. So I think they will bounce back, but they got to do better than that. Um, and the Seahawks have a good game to bounce back against the 0-12 Jets next week, so they should get that win. Let's go. Let's go Eagles Packers, uh, where the Packers jumped out to a 23 to three third quarter lead, and then the Eagles bench Carson Wentz in favor of rookie Jalen Hurts. Hurts throws his uh, first career touchdown pass, um, but the Packers, you know, they cut it to a 23 16 game at one point with Hurts in there, but Aaron Jones goes for 77 yards and seals the win. Packers get to nine and three. Eagles fall to 3-8-1, but the biggest news coming out of this game is Carson Wentz is benched for the rest of the year in favor of rookie Jalen Hurts. Uh, Dustin, do you agree with this decision? Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, it was coming because Wentz has had a bad couple of years, but I mean, right now they need somebody who can, you know, Move the football because yeah. Eagles are struggling bad moving the football. And he can use and, his legs too. He's got good athleticism. And and I mean his his throwing on the run was pretty impressive on Sunday. I mean that yeah. was that was pretty nice. So I think maybe he provides a spark. Yeah. I don't see him starting next season because they're paying Wins too much. I mean you're not going to pay him that much money and keep him on the bench. Wow. So, so they're gonna start Jalen Hurts for the rest of the year, and then go back to Carson Wentz next year. Absolutely, that's just my opinion because, I mean, look how much they're paying him. You're not just gonna pay a, a quarterback like that to ride the bench unless you intend on trading him. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. I got a good question for you, Dustin. Let's go to Brett real quick. Brett, how do you feel? What do you think? It's a smart move to go with Jalen Hurts for the rest of the year. I don't know if you think that. You're more confident in him leading you to the, uh, a possible a possible uh, division championship in the playoffs. Then yeah, but you you know what I think? In a, in a typical year, though, you wouldn't your record. You wouldn't be competing. So this, this is something that you would do at that point. But it's not a typical year in your division because your division's. <laughs> like some like a Philly fan that I saw a tweet the other day, uh, dumpster juice. <laughs> well, so here's what I think. I think Doug Peterson is recognizing how bad of a year it's been, and I think he's not only looking for a spark for the team, but I think he's looking for a spark for his career. He's not look. I think he's close to potentially getting fired after this year. With the, the way it's been handled and the way the offense, because don't forget, Doug Peterson's an offensive coach, and the offense has been abysmal. Well, yeah, so what? Just coaches just go haywire when they think that their job's in the line and just do irrational things? Or no, it, he's looking yeah. for a spark to get some wins to help his chances of staying with the team. He doesn't want to get fired. Carson Wentz. It's not working out, but Dustin, let me ask you this: uh, I, if I'm the Eagles, and if Jalen Hurts is a rookie, and I believe in him, and he does well for the rest of the year, he's my quarterback going forward. And there was a rumor that the Carson Wentz, with that contract, and the Colts looking for a quarterback with Philip Rivers not coming back potentially, that the Colts could trade for Carson Wentz in that contract. Well, how would you feel about that? Yeah, but I feel like we'd have to give up some big pieces, man. And I'd like to keep the guys that we have on offense because I, I believe and I love Jacoby Brissett. I mean, yeah, that's just my opinion. But also, Philip was talking about in some post game press conferences that he'd like to continue playing in Indianapolis. Do you want him to continue playing in Indianapolis? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Brissett, that's our best opportunity. I mean, Philip isn't playing bad right now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's it's going to be an interesting I mean, off season. Playoff, huh? Yeah, and uh, so we'll see. Yeah. Um. So let's go to. I mean, so so Jalen Hurts. 
I got something to say about that about the situation. Mm-hmm. You, with the luck thing, it could have been way, way, way worse for Indy for a long time, dude. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm just I'm talking to Indy fans in general. So I got a lot of Indy friends who are gonna hear this. But man, you, you see some organizations who suffered through quarterbacks for <laughs> a couple of decades. Some of them, unfortunately. Uh, but man, it's it's nice that you guys came over, been able to bounce back, you know, represent the state. So uh, shout out to that, and we'll see what happens with the Colts the rest of the season. One more thing. Um, speaking of that, uh, yeah, Andrew Luck, um, I am never gonna forgive you. <laughs> what if he comes? But anyways, yeah. Uh, but I, it, it just now dawned on me that Carson Wentz did play in Philly with Frank Reich, so it could work. Yeah, so we'll see if that happens. But uh, it looks like Jalen Hurts is going to make his first career start in Week 14 against the Saints and Taysom Hill. So that should be fun to watch. Uh, let's go Patriots Chargers. Let's, tr- let's speed it up here a little bit towards the end. Patriots Chargers, a blowout win. 45 nothing Patriots over the Chargers. This is the type of win that could provide a spark and carry this team into the playoffs. Um, you know, they're they get back to 6-6, six and six, but a 45 nothing type of win can give you a lot of momentum and belief, especially from that defense. The defense is what carries New England most of the time. So, uh, big game coming up tomorrow night at the Rams. If the Patriots lose that game, then it's right back to where they were, where they're inconsistent and we're not sure about this Patriots team if they win and are on a winning streak at 7-6, and six, especially if it, if they can hold McVay's offense down like they did in the Super Bowl. Man, New England could really gain some momentum here in, Danu- in December going into January. Uh, so it could be fun to watch. Uh, Dustin, do you... What's up, Brett? It's not the same defense, though. I mean, but Bill Belichick and and those guys always seem. It doesn't matter who's back there; they seem to get the most out of them. I mean, that's true, but the, I mean, they just, yeah. I don't know. But they'll, they'll be they'll be alright. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna come down. I think this is a huge game tomorrow night because win or loss, it changes a lot. You get to seven and six, and you know, you're right there with the Dolphins as well. The Dolphins, I believe, are what seven and five, or something seven like that, four. seven and four, and they've got um, the Chiefs coming in. So a lot could change in one week in the AFC East. So we'll see. Uh, but a big game tomorrow night. I can't wait for that game. I'm gonna be watching closely. I'm kind of gonna be, uh, you know, kind of be rooting on New England a little bit. It's fun. To get into January and have the Patriots be a threat. Yeah, uh, let me tell you, if they keep winning and they get into the playoffs, what you don't want to do is face a is, is face Bill Belichick in the playoffs. I don't care who the quarterback is, Bill Belichick in the playoffs is a god. He well, is. Bill Belichick with Cam Newton in the playoffs too, like with that running game and all that. You don't want to face them. It's over. Yeah. So I can't wait. I'm looking forward to how that season ends in New England. Uh, Broncos, Chiefs. Uh, Broncos get out to a 10 3 first half lead, but the Chiefs rally uh, and win the game 22 16 to Ron Matthew with two interceptions. Chiefs improve to 11 and 1, tied with the Steelers for the one seed, but the Steelers own the tiebreaker. Um,. Now, speaking of Bronco fans this offseason, they had high expectations. They were talking playoffs potentially. Now they're sitting at 4-8 and eight and out of the playoff race. But in my opinion, the biggest question I had going into the season and the biggest question I still have based on the way that game ended because they had a chance to beat Kansas City. But Drew Locke has been reckless with the football and turning it over a little too much. Where do you guys stand, Brett? I'm gonna go with you first. Where do you stand on Drew Locke? You um, you put that pretty, put that very politely. Yeah. Thanks. Well, he's got potential. He's got an arm. At times, he he gets the ball to Jerry Judy and these guys, but at times he's reckless. 
I think he shows more in him. Like, he's consistent. Well, I wouldn't even say he's con- consistent or inconsistently consistent or anything like that. He's just, I don't know. Can't, um, does Elway suck at quarterback evaluations? Is that what we're heading towards? I mean, or at least development. Yeah. Because a lot of these guys have been younger guys. Yep. Uh, Brock so, Osweiler like, and... Besides... You know, Manning. Yeah, but I mean, I could develop Peyton Manning at that age. <laughs> oh, he was, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they got a, there's no development. Yeah, exactly. And he was like, all right, I'm going to come here, I'm going to win, and that's that. <laughs> um, but they didn't get that. You, know, you, don't get, you, you don't get Peyton Mannings every year. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you, where do you stand on this, Dustin? What What is Drew Locke? Does he have a, a, a future as a franchise quarterback in this league, or are you? do you have your doubts? I I loved him when he was first drafted, but now I'm, start, I'm starting to have my doubts. I mean, yeah, like you said, it seems like Vic, Vic Bengio is not the guy to develop a quarterback. I mean, he's a defensive guy, so yep. I, he needs somebody there who's going to, Developed the quarterback, and I mean, yeah, Elway, but he really don't coach, so, you know, he's not out there constantly. I might eat these next words. I might eat this, and this might be embarrassing at some point, so hold me to this. But I'm going to say it. These Chiefs, these 2020 Chiefs, are more beatable than any of the last two years with Patrick Mahomes. Absolutely. This Chiefs team could have lost this game on Sunday night, they could have lost a couple other games. Now, granted, Patrick Mahomes is, a, is as clutch as it comes. So you can't give Mahomes the ball late in the last possession. But they are beatable, and this defense isn't as good as it was the last couple years either. Um, yeah. that, that was something I remember when I, uh, I, was, I had to sit in that parking lot when I did. Uh, uh, that was my little side studio for the podcast for one one week mm-hmm. uh, talked about that like they didn't they won that was a game that they won and people were questioning yeah the uh the heart of the they had like one loss or something yeah it was one loss so, on the year yet we're saying this do you agree with me or am i crazy well, i mean they haven't lost since you said that a couple weeks ago but i think it's still the same concept yeah but but you gotta see, there's a threshold at which we have to s- stop. Yeah, exactly. Certain games passed, and like they're one of those teams that like we can't, you, know, you can't compare them to that team because that team's not compared. To, you, know, you can't, they're not comparable to. There's not, not nothing compares to the Kansas City teams in the last couple of years. Well, and um, I would say this: Patrick Mahomes is my league MVP this year. Like, Patrick Mahomes has been special, special. But right, it, doesn't, it the, just doesn't seem like they're doing much because he's not doing as much as he was, but he's still doing better. I mean, he's still he he's still damn good, and, but the defense has its holes, and they're running the ball more. And to be honest, the, the Chiefs running the ball more doesn't seem to help them, I don't think. They, they aren't doing it super successfully. And here's my bold prediction – Chiefs at Dolphins, week 14. I'm taking Miami. With who at quarterback? With Tua. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, you are on oh, yeah, he's... <laughs> All right, let's speed up. we got to finish this out before uh, Dustin. I have one more thing to say. All right. All right, man. Uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is going to win MVP, bro. 37 doing what he's doing. That's incredible. Maybe. You know the media loves them some Patrick Mahomes and all that ketchup. Yeah, that's true. State Farm commercial. Yeah, I hate those commercials. But Aaron Rodgers is in them too. So if Aaron Rodgers wins league MVP, I'm not going to be mad at it. He's had a hell of a year too. Yeah, but that's annoying. It is annoying. Is it? But when you uh, when you when you have the season on the line and Rodgers drops a 40-burger on your head, what are you going to do? Say he sucks? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go Washington and Steelers. Washington hands the Steelers their first loss of the season, 23-17. Uh, Steelers are still in a good spot. Washington improves to 5-7. and seven. Win of the year for Washington in Pittsburgh. 
how impressed are we with Washington? Uh, you know, going into Pittsburgh, getting that win. They they're playing some good football right now, despite their record. Yeah, that's funny that they did that. Yeah, it had to happen eventually. Mike Tomlin seemed like almost relieved that they got their first loss out of the way. Well, I feel, I think I feel like over the years and 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 diff- across many different uh, sports with teams that get into the double double no losses, they should feel how know how it feels to lose. Is but I think it's a you know it's better like so you're right like the the, the pressure. To, to remain undefeated for those next, what, is going to have to go another six weeks. Yeah. Gonna, you know, it could have got to them now. Now they can. The media is not there as much as they were yep. a week ago. So they're getting some relaxation, and it's kind of like whatever. But, I mean, Washington's still fighting, <laughs> literally fighting for a playoff spot. So it's not like it was a bad loss. How impressed I mean, are you? Now, Dustin, how impressed are you with this Washington win? Um, yeah, it, it was a great win for Washington. Great momentum builder for Ron Rivera. Congratulations to him. And, I mean, you know, the Steelers, though, man, they have a weakness. And it's it's getting to Big Ben. And if you get to Ben, the Steelers won't win. It's a lack, of, it lack of running game, too. They're, they're, yep, and yeah. Dupree being out really hurts them. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I don't want to talk about the Steelers being bad because they're one of my biggest hopes that someone can take Kansas City down. Um, and I, I like what the Steelers are doing, but yeah, they definitely do have a weakness or two. So it's going to be something to keep an eye on the rest of the year. Let's go Bills 49ers, where the 49ers jump out to a 7 nothing lead, but the Bills rally, take a 27-10 lead late third, and hang on to win 34-24. Bills improved to 9-3. Stay one game up on the Dolphins and host the Steelers on Sunday Night Football. Potentially, we could be looking at a Steelers losing streak if the Bills can beat them on Sunday Night Football. Another big ass game in prime time. Uh, you guys think Buffalo can get that win? Uh, I can't wait for that game. What do you think, Brett? I mean, why not? They've been showcasing that all year. They've been proving it. Yeah. Uh, people, it's they're kind of just quietly. Sliding, <laughs> they don't. Doesn't matter. Like they're, they're quietly sliding by. Um, they don't need to make any noise. They're just doing their thing. They're gonna be where everybody else that's getting all the hype is gonna be here in a couple weeks, and they're gonna get the same shot. So. Um, Ooh, I just thought of they something. Gotta, they gotta finish it. Speaking of worst case scenario for Buffalo, imagine they get into the playoffs. They win the division, get into the playoffs. And then here comes a red hot New England. That would that would suck, or or even Miami for that case. Who knows? D- Dustin gets a red hot New England in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Dustin, the Bills are looking pretty impressive though, and a huge ass game to potentially give the Steelers a losing streak on Sunday night on NBC. Yeah, I mean you uh, you're the one who thinks that the. Pittsburgh is the biggest threat to the Chiefs. I, I, I think it's the Bills. I mean, yeah. Josh Allen is playing his, his ass off right now and looking like a true franchise quarterback. And I think the Bills are the biggest threat to the Chiefs in the AFC. And they will go and beat Pittsburgh on Sunday night. There's three teams I would, I would put as a threat. The Steelers, the Titans, and the Bills. Uh, no Indianapolis. No, no Indianapolis, sorry. <laughs> if that Indy defense gets going and starts shutting people out, then hell yeah. It, I'll support a dominant-ass defense. But I, I got to see more out of Indy. Maybe they get hot. Maybe they get hot and finish the year out on fire and then, you know. Uh, I'm just joking with you, Dustin. <laughs> All right, let's go Tuesday night football. We had Cowboys-Ravens. Cowboys jump out to a 10-7 lead, but that was about all they had. They lose 34-17. The Ravens, after a little rough stretch, uh, get Lamar Jackson back and show out. Put up 34 points on the Cowboys defense. They improved to 7-5. And and a big-ass game in Cleveland in the dog pound on Monday Night Football. Uh, Like I said, I got Ravens by double digits. If the Ravens can win that, if the Ravens finish hot, finish the year like... 
10 and 6 or 11 and 5, maybe they get into the playoffs, maybe they can finally get a playoff win. Um are you guys going to are you guys going to believe in Baltimore or are you still like uh, I don't know? Well, we're going to find out on Monday. Yeah. Who we're going to believe in, whether it's going to be Cleveland or Baltimore because last time it was Baltimore when they played Pittsburgh. Yep. You know what happened, so now they have to bounce back from that. They got their their little um all right, this is what happens and now you got to go and do the same thing and show them this is what happens. Yeah, I I just look back to week 1 of 38-6 Ravens over Browns. I believe that was week 1. So, this is a huge game for bragging rights and a prove it game for both teams. And Yeah, and I just I don't see I I would put a lot of money down. I do not see Cleveland winning that game. What do you think, Dustin? winning that game, and I, I'm going to go with Cleveland by 10, because, I mean, yeah. Lamar Jackson threw for 107 yards, bro. You cannot win in the league throwing, throwing for 107 yards. I mean, yeah, against the Cowboys, who completely are terrible, but you're not going to beat Cleveland. Dustin, right Dustin, look, we got to do a friendly wager on this game. We'll talk about it. Like, we'll figure something out. Uh, <laughs> But, I mean, you agree, right? I mean, Lamar being one-dimensional is going to absolutely hurt Baltimore. What do you mean, like, not being able to pass the ball? Yeah, I mean, 107 yards? Are you kidding me? That's terrible. He only threw for 107, you're saying, against Dallas, right? Yeah. He only did that because he didn't need to throw the ball. Against the Browns, Lamar's going to torch that team. And I, I, think, I don't buy that Browns defense. I know some people do. I don't. Not in a big game like that. I think Baker, I, I think it's going to be the other way around. Last week, last week with Baker's coming out party, I think he's going to show that he's the real deal again. Uh, you could take Baker, give me Lamar, and we'll see. We'll do a friendly wager on that. All right. <laughs> this is cool. This is the first time... We don't usually disagree like that. I like it. What do you think, Brett? Who would you choose, me or Dustin, on that? Who are you going to support? Um, like, not let's say not me or you. Let's say not me or Dustin. Who are you taking, Ravens or Browns? Man. Um, if you had to put 100 bucks on it. I got to put 100 bucks. Well, if FanDuel will, uh, and all the sports betting in Michigan will release... And give me that hundred dollars that they said that they're gonna give everybody. I would. Yeah, where who are you gonna put that on in Cleveland? I think, man. I think after the way I saw that the them play, and now that they kind of got over that hump of being, being talked about, I think Cleveland's gonna do it. All right. You, I mean, I'm just well, saying. I, it's it, hard to go against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. See. I'm not a R- Lamar Jackson fan. You guys have heard me trash him. I'm not a big Ravens fan. I'm like this. Is, they're not the same Ravens. They're not 14 and two. Lamar's not the MVP this year. But I, you know how di- division rivalry games. It just seems like one team has the other team's number. Oftentimes, often not always, but oftentimes, and yes. And the bigger the game, the more that seems to matter. That's why I'm going. I know it's a road game. I know the Ravens have struggled recently. But I got Ravens, and I got them by double digits. I I would go 20, but I'm not going to be a cocky son of a bitch, so I'm going to go 10. Double digits is a lot, though. It is. See, look, man, Lamar's MVP last year was a fluke in my opinion. You know, I mean, I'm just not big on a quarterback who can't throw. He you know can throw, just not always. If, if he could throw, they would have went farther into the playoffs. Absolutely. So, I don't know. Good debate, though, man. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a game. Uh, we might have to get together and watch that game, to be honest. But I'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, and then tomorrow night, 
Now they're talking about there's so many good games on prime time this week. And it starts with tomorrow night, the six and six Patriots at the eight and four Rams. Let's get our predictions real quick. Dustin, who are you taking? Patriots. All right. Brett, who are you taking? Yeah, I'm going with the Patriots. Damn, we're all going Patriots. I'm going Patriots, too. You know, pe- uh, the Rams should win. They're at home. Uh, it's in a dome. They got McVay and Goff. But I think, you know, Fox or uh, Belichick's going to be ready. The defense is going to be ready. And they're going to try to run the ball and take, you know, keep the Rams' offense off the field. I'm looking forward to it. I got Patriots. I think it's a close game. I think it's single digits. But it should be a lot of fun. Thanks, guys, for coming on. It was a great episode. Yeah, it's great. Let's get into the crunch time now. Yeah, this is my favorite time of year when all the games matter. You know, all these primetime games are great matchups. And teams fighting and clawing to get into the playoffs. This is when it gets fun. December football. So... Yeah. COVID, you can't stop us. <laughs> Knock on wood. Right. There we go. Um, but yeah, let's. You know, we're we're heading into week fourteen. The playoffs right around the corner. It seems like after all those haters said we weren't gonna have any football this year, seems like we're set to do it. So appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for the listens. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you think we're crazy, if you think we should be all on the Rams tomorrow night, let us know. If you think uh, the Chiefs are unbeatable, let us know. Have a great week, guys, and peace out.